Warm greetings to each and every one of you. My name is Palandre Zorashi. I'm the Archbishop of Gatineau, and this is the 20th in a series entitled The Mass Unconfined. And today I want to speak about the homily, the preaching that is done after the proclamation of the texts in the Liturgy of the Word at Mass. The homily. It's a, it's a source of a lot of discussion, isn't it? Sometimes they're great and sometimes they're not so great and sometimes we're bored and sometimes we're inspired. Well, let's ask ourselves, what is the role of the preaching that is done at this moment in the liturgy? And to do that, we need to go back right to the roots of the church in the Jewish tradition. It was part of the Jewish tradition that when people would gather in synagogues to listen to the word of God, there would be a word of explanation given by somebody who was recognized as an authority within the community. We can read in scripture 500 years before the time of Jesus in the book of Nehemiah, there's a beautiful scene where the temple which was destroyed by the Babylonians has not been rebuilt yet, but Nehemiah and Ezra gather the people together. Ezra is a scribe and Ezra proclaims scripture before them. If you want to read the story, it's in the eighth chapter of the book of Nehemiah. So Ezra proclaims the text. It's written in Hebrew. The people understand Aramaic, so it needs to be translated. So the Levites translate the text and scripture says and explain the text so that everyone will understand. You see, already we can see the roots of the homily, of the preaching at church in this story 500 years before the time of Jesus. We see Jesus at the synagogue in uh, Nazareth. Come to Nazareth and uh, he's invited to proclaim the word and to give a word of explanation. And he takes that beautiful text of the prophet Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and the Lord has anointed me. And he has sent me to bring good news to the poor. And he rolls up the scribe, gives it to the attendant. And then he gives, some people say, the shortest homily in, in the history of the world. He looks at the people and he says, today this word has been fulfilled in your hearing. The early apostles often would preach in the same way. Paul, we know, would go into synagogues where, as he was traveling to preach the word of God, and they would invite him to proclaim the text and then to teach on the text. And obviously he would connect that text with the resurrection of Jesus. Now, some didn't accept that, some did, and, and that's how the early Christian communities grew up. And so right away, the early Christian communities, when they would gather, they would read the letters of Paul that were circulating, or of Peter, or of John, or of Jude. They, they would read the texts of the Gospels when the Gospels were written a few years later, and ultimately it became the tradition. We know, for example, that St. Augustine would give remarkable homilies on the texts of the day, and he had scribes in the audience who would transcribed them, and so they were collected. We have the collected homilies of St. Augustine from the fourth century of the church, and they are all masterpieces. Now, during the Middle Ages, uh, since the Mass really became much more a private affair of the priest at the altar, and it continued to be in Latin when people no longer understood Latin, so nobody could follow what was being said or understand the readings, the, the habit of preaching continued, but it became detached from Scripture. And so the priest would simply give a catechetical lesson. He would uh, preach about the moral law, or he would preach about events that were going around, or he would preach about the meaning of the sacraments, or he would preach about the virtues. So... Or, or the creed. They were all tied to the Christian faith, but no longer to the text that had been proclaimed. In 1962, when the bishops of the Second Vatican Council decided that we needed to reform the liturgy, they decided to go back to the early practice where priests would be invited to preach on the texts that had been proclaimed in the liturgy of the word. And priests are invited to do this every Sunday and every weekday, if at all possible. And so priests and deacons and bishops 
uh, now have taken this habit of preaching on the Word of God. And this helps us understand the role of the homily. The, the homily is meant to help the Word of God touch us. It's an interesting situation for the priest to be in because, in a sense, he's still acting as uh, God's voice to God's people. He's still in the gospel. He proclaimed the gospel, and we say it is Jesus speaking to the people. Well, in a sense, it is still Jesus speaking to the people in the homily, but here it's through the priest's reading and experience and thinking of it. So he's also representing the people of God that is receiving this word and is trying to see the connections with their own lives. A, a, a priest cannot preach or a deacon or a bishop cannot preach unless they really uh, school themselves in the word of God and take the time to meditate this word, to study it, and to see how it connects with their own lives in this world in which we are. And so then the priest can speak that word to the people. It's not an easy task, you know. It's not an easy task because the congregation is so diverse. You know, when I get up to preach and I look at the people, especially on a big feast day, and I see hundreds of people before me, and I see children and uh, teens and uh, young adults. I see parents. I see single adults. I see grandparents. I know some people are, are joyful. I know some people are sad. They're going through hard times. What word can I possibly find that will touch all those people uh, you know, in the pew. How could I possibly be able to construct a homily that will keep everybody's attention? And I want to tell you right now, it's impossible. It's impossible, particularly if the people in the congregation are, are listening the way they listen to a TV program or the way they browse on the internet. And I'm guilty of that when I'm in the congregation, when I'm not preaching. I tend to take on that same attitude because I'm so used to kind of in front of the TV and if it's boring, I just flip the channel. How often I, I'll go through all the channels, you know, in 15 minutes because there's nothing really interesting. It's a consumerist attitude towards listening. It's like, you know, I, I, I sit back across my arms. I say, well, entertain me, Father. Do a good job, you know. In that situation, the preacher can't possibly reach people's hearts. The only way the word of a preacher can touch people's hearts if people are actively searching for what God is trying to tell them. So when I'm in the congregation, when I'm listening to somebody preaching, then I need to change my mindset, not sit back saying, kind of entertain me, but sit up and listen and ask myself, God, what are you trying to tell me? And I tell myself that if I start with the attitude that there's one sentence, in this homily there will be at least one sentence that is for me, I will find that sentence. I will find that sentence. I will find that word that is for me and it'll be different for the other person who's sitting next to me, because we're all different. But there'll be something in this preaching that is meant for me to take home, to ponder and to put into action in my own life. So nobody at Mass should be a passive uh, observer. We all need to be actors, all of us. We all have an active part to play. And in the homily, the congregation has to take on the role of, how can you say, a, a true interpreter for oneself of what God is trying to reach out and tell us. And if we think of the Mass unconfined and we think of the Mass as being for the salvation of the world, then we realize that it's doubly important that I find that word because it's not just for me. It's for the people I live with. It's for the people I will meet. It is for the world. What I'm going to receive is meant as a nourishment for others. That's why it's doubly important that I listen to this. 
And so I invite you next time that you celebrate the Eucharist, that you sit up at the moment of the homily, that you find that word that is for you and that you bring it to others and pray that the Spirit will be in the heart of the preacher and in your heart so that God's work might be done in you. God bless.